Over the last few years, there has been one indicator that has consistently predicted market tops with surprising accuracy. In this video, we not only reveal what that indicator is, but more importantly, how to use it correctly to structure great trades off of it. We'll even show you a case study of how you could have potentially made a 200% return and tripled a $20,000 account in just one year from this one indicator. I'm Mike Bellafiore, and we are a long-standing proprietary trading firm in New York City with numerous highly successful traders, almost all of whom started their trading careers with SMB. We hope you agree you found the right place to potentially grow your trading account. Hi, I'm Seth Freiberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan. And as many of you probably know, the CBOE Volatility Index, which is commonly known as the VIX, is kind of like a thermometer of how much volatility the options market believes there will be in the stock market over the next month or so, based on the pricing of index options tied to the S&P 500. When the VIX goes up, it means the options market is forecasting increased price volatility in the market, both up and down, by the way, over the next month. And when the VIX goes down, the options market is implying that there's going to be less volatility anticipated in the market over the next month. Fortunately, it's not really necessary to understand the nuances of how the VIX is calculated in order to understand a great option strategy, which uses the VIX as a way of helping us to identify and profit from near-term tops in the market. And so let's take a look at a chart of the VIX over the last 12 months. And as you can see, it topped out pretty consistently at the 35 to 37 area and began to bottom out pretty consistently again as soon as it got into the 17 to 20 area. And what we realized was that the VIX dropping into that 17 to 20 area seemed to be a pretty good indicator that the market was beginning to find a short-term top and that a sell-off would not be far off into the future if the VIX, in fact, dropped into that 70 to 20 level. And we also realized that a certain option strategy was going to be ideal for profiting from this thesis. And that's because this strategy is very forgiving and doesn't draw down much if the market doesn't immediately sell off once it fell into the 17 to 20 range. But rather, as long as that sell-off ultimately took place over the next couple of months, the trade was going to work out beautifully. Now, in order to explain the option strategy that works so beautifully with the VIX as an indicator, we need to make sure that everyone watching this video understands how call options on indexes work. And so we're going to do a really quick review of them, and then we'll jump right back into the details of the strategy. And so the best way to understand a call option on an index is to think of it as a bet. Call options pay off if an index closes above what's known as the strike price of the option on the day that the option expires. If the index does close above that price on expiration day, the call buyer gets $100 per point that the market closes above that call strike price. If the index doesn't close above the call strike price, the option expires worthless and the call seller just pockets the premium he was paid with no further obligation. So, for example, if an index closed at 4032, then the 4000 call would pay off $3200 as you can see from the calculation because the index closed 32 points above the strike price of the call, which was 4000. However, the 4075 call would expire worthless as the index didn't close above 4075, so the call seller just pockets the premium. So those are the basics of call options on indexes. Okay, so with that said, let's head back to the first date in the last 12 months where the VIX dropped below 20. And as you can see, that date was March 28th, 2022, when the VIX closed at 19.63, just below 20 for the first time in the last 12 months. Now, if we look at the S&P 500 index, also known as the SPX index, you'll see that it closed at 45.75 that day in what most people would call a pretty bullish looking chart, actually. And so let's say on that day, we went out about two months to the May 20 options expiration, and we went ahead and sold five of the 45.75 calls, and we bought for protection five of the 46.25 calls expiring on the same day. And so 
when we did that, selling calls at the price that the index is trading and buying calls above that for protection in the same expiration chain. When we do that basic structure, we're entering into what options traders refer to as an at the money call credit spread, which is actually a bearish position. And you'll see why in a minute. Now, let's first break down what has happened here from a cash flow standpoint. As you can see, we sold five of the 4575 calls for $115.95. And because each option represents $100 per point beyond the strike price, you multiply that by 100 and you sold five of them. So multiplying them all together, you'll receive $57,975 in cash into your account. But then you'll turn right around and pay $86.55 for the five calls 50 points away up at $46.25. And for those, you'll pay a total using the same kind of calculation of 43275 which results in net cash flow initially of $14,700. And your broker, by the way, will require you to have at least $10,300 in your account at that point, which is also the trade's worst case scenario. Moving to the day this trade expires, as you can see, the market actually very quickly started to sell off almost immediately after we put the trade on and continued downward more than 600 points by May 20, the day the options expired. And so now valuing our trade is easy because we start with the cash flow we first receive for selling the call credit spread. And then it's obvious that both the 4575 and 4625 calls expired worthless because both are literally hundreds of points above the final price of SPX on expiration day. And so they don't pay off anything and they just expire with no value, leaving the trade with all of the cash flow he originally received, that $14,700. Okay, so the indicator was correct and the VIX falling below 20 did indeed mark the beginning of a downtrend in the market. Now, let's move to the next time in the last 12 months where the VIX fell below 20, which was on August 10th, 2022, when it closed for the first time since March below 20, that day closing at 1974, in fact. And that day, the SPX closed at 42.10. And so again, we'll go out a few months to the October expiration. And as we did before, we'll sell five calls right at the closing price of SPX at 42.10. And we'll buy five calls 50 points above that at 42.60 to form a 50 point wide call credit spread, which again is a bearish position as we just showed you. And as you can see from the same kind of calculation as we did in the last trade, in this case, we collected 13,850. And in this case, your broker would require a little more, 11,150 in your account to initiate this trade. So if we move to the day that these options in October expire, we can see that the SPX again closed significantly down at 37.52. And so again, both options expire worthless. And again, you just have pocketed the 13,850 you collected initially. The third time in the last 12 months that the VIX closed below 20 was on December 1st, 2022, as you can see. And on that day, SPX closed at 4076. And so again, we enter an at the money call credit spread, expecting a bearish move with the five short calls at 4075 and the five long calls at 4125, 50 points above, just as we did before. And as you can see, we collected 13,875 and your broker will require this time slightly less 11,125 in capital. And so it should come as no surprise to you by now that on the day that these options expire, January 20th, SPX had again sold off, this time down to 39.72, which again gave us a full win of 13,875, because in this case, the SPX expired more than 100 points below the strike prices of both call options. Now, in the last 12 months, the VIX dropped below 20 yet another time, actually in mid-January of 2023, but we wouldn't know the outcome of that trade quite yet, although it would currently be profitable by over $3,000 had you actually entered on that day. And so as you can see, accumulating the profits from all of the completed trades over the last three years would have more than tripled a $20,000 account, which would have exceeded an account value of over $60,000 over the last 12 months, utilizing the VIX below 20 as an indicator of a market downturn. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is that professional traders have lots of indicators that they watch and the VIX 
falling below 20 has been a pretty reliable indicator that the market is overbought and a bearish trade would be in order. The indicators rarely work immediately, by the way, but if a pro trader with some options knowledge and some patience is at the wheel, he'll be able to put together a bearish strategy, just like the call credit spread that we used in today's lesson to leverage that opportunity with occasionally incredible results, as you see in this case. Okay, as you just saw, you can use certain indicators to potentially make huge returns in any given year, but these signals may not happen often. What if you want to increase your consistent monthly income from the markets? To find out how, click the video appearing on your screen right now to discover how you can triple your income from covered calls with a simple tweet.